Can you see that? What's good? Yeah. What's good? What's good, fans? Thank you guys for tuning in to another fantastic week. This is your man, Cam. And I got my man, Cleavon. What's going on, Cleavon? I'm doing fantastic, Cam. How about yourself tonight? <laughs> you doing good? You got a little funny smirk on your face, man. I, I wonder why. <laughs> no reason. I want no reason wonder whatsoever. Why. You look like you're a little confident, man. You know these. You know your boys is going uh, in a battle right now, a battle for their playoffs, playoffs lives right now. Oh, they'll right? be okay. Don't worry about them. They'll, that, they'll be okay. Is where is eighty eighty seventy five percent eighty percent? Where where's where's his percentage tonight? I'm gonna say sixty three point six percent. Sixty three point, and that's good enough to for enough. DeAndre Ayton. Good enough. That's good enough for DeAndre Ayton. Good enough. Oh boy. Oh, you you got a lot of confidence in, huh? I do. Okay, all right. Well, let's get into this, man. It's uh, it's the Voice of the Fans podcast, folks, and we want to thank you guys for tuning in. In this show, we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs. We're going to talk about the surprises, these upsets. We got some historic performances by a couple players, one on the West Coast, well, a couple on the West Coast, one down south in Texas. We got some historic performances that we're going to get into. And then I'm going to ask you guys a question. So you guys can cue yourself up now. Hit me up on Twitter. What's good in sport on Twitter? Voice of fans on Instagram. Cleveland, what's your what's your call information? At Cleve Wonder on Twitter and Cleveon Steele on Instagram. Now I'm 100% Cleve, 100 sure Cleveland's gonna get this wrong. So fans, I need your help. I need your help to clarify this. Who is the best player that you've seen in NBA this season? You're talking about history. We're not talking about who got the most rings. We're talking about the best player that's played in the NBA this season. 2021 season. I want to ask that question to you guys. And again, I'm 100% clue, sure Cleveland's going to get this wrong. So I need you fans to chime in. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit Cleveland up on Twitter. Let us know what your, th what your thoughts are. So like I said, we're going to talk about some of these NBA performances. We're going to talk about Cleveland this day in history. And as always, want to make sure you guys tune in to our podcast, if you can't watch the show, tune into our podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, most any po podcast platform tuned in. Most any platform, uh, podcast platform that you hear in podcast, find Voice of the Fans podcast. Also, I want to give a shout out to the guys at H&B Media TV. Make sure you check them out. Go ahead and subscribe to their page. They got a lot of NBA content for you. On our podcast, you're going to find NBA NFL content. We, we sometimes Cleveland, we even have some MLB content. Sometimes these, we do for, for these fans to talk about. So make sure you guys check check us out. Make sure you check them out. And again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Voice of the Fans podcast. And be sure to call a friend, man. We're gonna be in this for we got about ninety minutes, so we're gonna be in here for a minute. So call a friend, send a friend a link, tell them to tune in to the to the baddest show in the in all the land. And Cleveland, with it being June third. 2021 man this year flying by it is week 141 of voice of the fan voice of the fans podcast the new iteration of the voice of the fans podcast Cleveland, we 140 weeks 41 weeks in buddy we got some history be before that but in this iteration we 141 weeks in man are you well how that make you feel oh it makes me feel really proud cam uh, extremely fantastic and Glad that we had the opportunity to uh, give our sports opinion to the voice of the fans. So each and every week, fans, we start off with our numbers. Again, with it being June 23rd or June 3rd, 2021, and week 141, we're going to use the number three and the number 41. Cleveland, when you think of the number three, who wore that number best or who comes to, who first comes to your mind? Well, the first thing you know first comes to mind, Cam, is uh, the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks, uh, Russell Wilson. He's the first person that comes to mind. Um, the Walter Payton Award winner this year, uh, an extreme humanitarian. Um, he took an opportunity when it wasn't there. It seemed like all was lost, but yet he still had faith. Um, he persevered. And he's come out a better person on the other side, Cam. He so the person that comes to mind first is Russell Wilson. Now, the person who wore it best, I'm going to go with Babe Ruth. 
Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. Okay. Babe Ruth. Okay. You ever heard of a guy you got named somebody better than you? You ever heard of, of a guy named Alex Rodriguez? I have. He's not as good as Babe Ruth, but yes, I what, have heard of him. Okay. What What about a couple of these names here? Diana Taurasi. What's she doing in the WNBA? Wow. I doubt she's spinning up. Uh, you know, Babe Ruth type numbers, but she's doing well for this. <laughs> Okay. All right. And Candace Parker, who does she compete with Candace Parker or is she oh man her Candace resume Parker a little bit is, is a sensation, but no, yeah, no babe Ruth. No. Okay. All right. Not in the same conversation. Really shouldn't be. Okay. All right. Um Alvin Kamara. Well, excuse me, the number forty one. I, I gave one away. Alvin Kamara. Who who's better than Alvin Kamara right now? Who who you know won the number forty one? So the first person that comes to mind is a Dallas Maverick uh, player named Dirk Nowitzki. Retired top five all-time scoring, played 20 years in the league, won a championship. Um, certainly is the first person that comes to mind. And to be quite honest with you, Cam, he's the person that wore the number the best. Okay, so. For the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> oh, you reminded me of that for some reason. <laughs> no, I was just—I didn't know if you, if you caught that part. Yeah, he had, um, he had his famed career with the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> what would you know about Eugene Robinson? He wore number forty-one. I do. You know, man, Eugene was a, a hell of a safety for the Seattle Seahawks. Hell of a safety for the Green Bay Packers. Hell of a safety for the uh, Atlanta Falcons. Unfortunately. He had a few incidents that kind of marred his uh, reputation a tad bit. And, you know, we're not going to get into that right here on the show. But, uh, you know, let's just say um, I think he regrets some of the decisions that he made. But still, and yet, he had a great career. Eugene Robinson was an awesome guy. I remember watching him as a rookie getting toasted in the in the secondary of the Seattle Seahawks. And then he actually had a long career with them and before he went on and decided to kind of – tour some different spots around the country and I uh, kind of got himself in trouble one night before the Super Bowl, huh? You know, I wasn't going to get in all that, Cam. I'm just going to say he was a good guy um, yeah. and, he, you know, he played well at a safety position and, you know. I'm sure. I'm sure he was a great guy. I'm sure he was. I'm not going to go too much further than that into the story. Cleveland. It's been quite some time. Cleveland. The NBA, yes, NBA basketball is fantastic. Right now we got the Denver Nuggets now have a six-point lead over the Portland Trailblazers. They lead the series three to two with four minutes to go in Portland, and they have managed to come back because they were down by at least 15 points here at within the second half. It's four minutes to go in the game, but they were down at least 15 points, and they managed to come back here. 114 Denver, 108 Portland. Denver has the ball, they're driving, and there is a killer. Austin Rivers hits a three-pointer to give him a nine-point lead with 351 remaining. Austin Rivers has been, you know, speaking of guys who's had a, a heck of a first-round playoffs, Austin Rivers has earned some money here um, in the absence of Murray for the Denver Nuggets. What do you think? Have you seen his action? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that uh, what was that, that game four? It was uh, tremendous. I mean, the way that he was able to come through with those three pointers uh, and send it back to uh, Portland and a deficit, he's certainly uh, proven his worth in the NBA. And he's not just his, uh, you know, his father's son. He really, he really can hoop. So, yeah, you know, not, not the coach's yeah, son. Opportune time. So. So we got to uh, let's let's start with the the series that are over and and they're moving on. We got the Milwaukee Bucks <clears throat> swept swept the Miami Heat. Miami Heat was the darlings in NBA last season in the bubble. They were able to get to the NBA Finals championship with their um, hobble roster, if you will. Had a couple guys kind of. Had outlier seasons and, and play out of their minds last year to help them get to the finals, but the Milwaukee Bucks kind of telling the NBA, putting the NBA in notice, we mean business this season, huh? 
Yeah, well, Cam, shame on me for putting all that stock and confidence in the JVs. They certainly did not come out and play with any level of intensity or um, want to, from what I could see. Um, and it was a little bit embarrassing. You know, uh, I'm not going to say that I'm the biggest Miami Heat fan, but at the same time, I certainly thought they could get past Milwaukee. Uh, you know, as, as you have said many times, you didn't think, uh, you know, Giannis. Antetokounmpo was really, you know, a great player this season. Um, I, I think he had him, you know, around nine or ten in the league at the at the time that we last did our rankings. But uh, he certainly showed up when it when it came, you know, time to show up. I was extremely disappointed in what uh, Jimmy Butler and Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero and Bam Adebayo were able to do. I mean, it just looked like they needed one more score. They thought that they had picked it up with Victor Oladipo. That wasn't the move. Um, and they got swept, swept out. And um, the Milwaukee Bucks put the whole entire league on notice. This is not the same Milwaukee Bucks that you've seen before. Uh, Brent Forbes came off hitting some threes. If he continues to do that, it's going to be a problem. Chris Middleton played as, as well as he can play. So, yeah, they got past that first series pretty easy. Uh, now, can they get past that second series? Mm, not quite as confident in that one. Wasn't really confident they could get past the Heat, but the Heat just really let me down. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to get too into that, but uh, the JVs were not who we thought they were, not who I thought they were. Let's put it like that. So, yeah, they they played – I think the Bucks played pretty good. I mean, uh, to say that I had them, I think, at 9 or 10, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go back on the tape on that one. Oh, yeah, go back on the tape. Yeah, you had, you had Giannis way down the list. Well, what we see now is that these guys have, has, have come together and play out basketball. They handled their business. They they had um, a, a quelling a, a hurt dog out here, and and they went ahead and finished them off. Took took the Miami Heat out of the misery. They can never get on sync for most of the season. They had injured players here, had players that were out. The rotation was kind of um, off uh, the second half of the season, and yeah. They went ahead and, and and took them out. The Milwaukee Bucks did so in impressive fashion. They show they show who they could be potentially, and in the, the next series they're gonna have to put, face uh, my NBA NBA uh, future final champions. favorite. Yeah, final yeah. favorite is uh, look. the Brooklyn Nets. Mm -hmm. So that that actually starts Saturday. We got Brooklyn and, and Milwaukee. Um, who, after Brooklyn sweeps, not excuse me, not sweeps, but a gentleman sweep of the Boston Celtics, three games get them out of there, or four games get them out of there. They gave three games to one, four games to one, excuse me. Um, how did the Brooklyn Nets look to you? Um, again, I already had them as my favorite to win the finals. Do they look like final champions to you? Uh, they look great, extremely impressive, and given the health condition of Joel Embiid, I don't see a whole lot of opposition to them uh, just kind of cakewalking their way. Not a straight sweep like you predicted earlier, but, uh, yeah, they will get to the NBA Finals, no doubt. Okay. All right. So you come, you come to your senses. You're, yeah, you're Joel to... Embiid is uh, torn his meniscus. I don't know if you heard. Yeah, but he was out there warming up the other – he was warming up yesterday. Oh, he might, okay. He might play tomorrow. Oh, for real? He might the torn meniscus? Oh, okay. He might play tomorrow. You know, they, they got the softer side of the lineup. So they don't have the game gonna... tomorrow. They they won their series, so they're okay. No, but I'm no, just saying he, made, he warmed he warmed up yesterday. He might play the next game. They play the Hawks. When they play the Hawks, Saturday or Sunday? I mean, exactly. Well it doesn't matter. They they really they really shouldn't be playing him in that capacity. I mean he's got a torn meniscus. I mean this... So you don't so you sit him, you don't rest you rest him against the Hawks, is what you're saying. You absolutely do. You rest and let Seth Curry just count on Seth Curry thirty points every night. Yes. Okay. All right. So one, just a little up, quick update: Denver one twenty one, Portland one thirteen. A minute and a half to go. Who's Dane pulls up for three and it's off. And it's off one twenty four. It's out of bounds. I think Portland has a gets the ball out of bounds here. But uh, yeah, what we see here is uh, Jokic. Driving to the hoop, we already see him hit a three pointer earlier. So the MVP is out here putting in a lot of work here in the finals. And for whatever reason, they sent him down. 
for whatever reason, he goes to the bench here with a minute and 24 seconds to go. This has got to be kind of a office for defense. Oh, they're looking at the – they're watching the replay. So he goes, takes a seat <laughs> while they look at the replay. And the replay shows that – look like Fort and the ball might have went out. Yeah, that's going to be Fort and the ball. Yeah, a couple a couple nuggets hit the ball before it went out. All right, so we talked about the Bucks. We talked about who they're facing in the Nets. Um, sweep of the Celtics, or excuse me, the Nets beating up on the Celtics. Uh, before we move too far away from this game, what do you think about the kid who got um, arrested for trying to hit Kyrie with the water bottle? Uh, they're trying to make a little bit too much of a point of what's going on. Um, I, I think it's a little bit uh, egregious, the uh, penalty for doing that. I think he was just uh, drunk and irritated that Kyrie was uh, killing him, as Kyrie is capable of doing. And, you know, fans haven't been out in a while and, you know, got a little out of himself. What, um, what do you think about Kyrie stepping on the logo? Oh, I mean, that's just, you know, that's just food for fodder. I mean, that's just what you do in the playoffs. I mean, you know, okay. Okay. You, you feel what you're doing and, you, you know, you, you just go with it. I'm okay with that. So the so they, he got – the the kid got a one thousand or five hundred dollar bail. A five hundred dollar bail. He got arrested <clears throat> and told to stay away from TD Garden. That's enough for you. As opposed to what I don't I don't know what the uh, you know the precedence for penalty for that kind of thing is. He threw the water bottle. They found him. They threw him in jail. They said he can never come back. I mean I don't know what more more you can do to a person for doing that. I mean, five hundred dollar fine is kind of light, isn't it? Five hundred dollar fine, and I mean, I just think that's kind of light for for what you're doing. The green, uh, I mean, you really could have to say you could have poked somebody somebody's eye out. You kind of another a three pointer by Aaron Gordon as the uh, Nuggets fifty two seconds remaining look like they're going to eliminate the Portland Trailblazers. They go up by nine. With 52 seconds to go, Dane pulls up from three, and it's off, and the Nuggets had the rebound, and this is all but, uh, you know, all but over. They're not, they're not even fouling right now, so too too bad. Yeah. Uh, so the next game we got come up, we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to that one. Um. So Sixers, Sixers beat up on the Wizards. I think they finished that one off last night, right? Yes, it did. Yeah. Sixers finished them up with the. Seth Curry goes for thirty, and yes. so they're going. They're going to be playing. They're going to be playing the winner of. Uh, no, they're going to be playing the, the, Atlanta, the Atlanta Hawks. Hawks. They're going to be yes. playing the Hawks, who who beat the Knicks. Yes. Um, what do you think about that series? Were you more impressed with the Hawks, their playoff win, or were you more impressed with the Knicks season? Oh, way more impressed with the Knicks season. I mean, the Hawks okay. certainly had talent okay. um, to do some things as they kind of came down the stretch, and they, they showed that. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the New York Knicks, with regards to kind of how they brought things together and, you know, an incredible season from Julius Randle. Let's not, you know, take anything away from that, dude. Um, and just the fact that they were able to uh, maintain and get the four seed, uh, home court advantage. I mean, you know, New York, New York needed that. So that was great. Just to see that, um, but unfortunately, as I said earlier, um, Trey Young would be the best player on the court, and he was for five straight games. He was. You remember my prediction at the beginning of the season? I told you my dark. You said, you said the Atlanta Hawks make the playoffs, and I, 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 I disagreed with you. I, I, I do remember that, but yeah, man, this is a different thing. Don't don't so, go breaking your don't go breaking your elbow patting yourself on the back for that. <laughs> well, I had the I had the Wizards too. I don't think anybody was predicting either one of those two teams making the playoffs. And um, the Wizards, although it was via the playing tournament, they did sneak into the tournament. Um, so the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, I'm happy for Nate McMillan. And they've been. I think their record since he's been on the on the team is like a 37 and 12. Since he's been incredible, in. incredible. I think that's a that I think that's a stat, and then just playing great basketball. So kudos to him. Um, kudos to him. 
And the, the New York Knicks, yeah, they they played above their skis. Like they everybody know they had a great season, a great um Thibodeau was gonna get the best out of their team, the best he could get out of out of their team. He was gonna get it. And he and he got that. So there's nothing uh for them to be, be disappointed about. Obviously it was a premature celebration by New York fans, Nick hysteria, partying like is Y two K. <laughs> and everything's about to shut down the way they celebrated last week. And, you know, that's why most people hate New York fans, just because they get one win and they and they go overboard. You know, similar to the teams out here in Los Angeles, specifically the, the team who Denver is going to face here in the next series. Well, the team playing for a chance to face the Denver Nuggets, the Suns and the Lakers have a 3-2 matchup. And it's about to go down in about probably 10, 15 minutes. And they're playing for a chance to move on. The Suns can eliminate the Lakers here. The Lakers need to win this game and win them two more games. I mean, kind of like the playing tournament, how they play. They were in the playing tournament. They had to win a game to get in the playing tournament. They got to win a game to extend their playoff life right now and then win another game just to get a chance to see the Denver Nuggets. So the Nuggets can rest a little bit. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, should I even ask you what you think is going to happen? Is AD playing, by the way? You know, it doesn't really matter, Cameron. The uh, Los it Angeles Lakers matter. are going to win game six. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if AD plays or not? No, it's not. Well, if it doesn't matter, well, why didn't they win game five? Instead, they it's got on the road. So they play – it's on the road, so you play better on the road, or you don't play as good on the road. Well, so, I, I mean, I mean, some teams play much better at home. It's, it's I mean, some the teams lose every single game at home during the playoffs. Lakers are not one of those teams, so I, I definitely think that they're going to come out and uh, have their best effort and win Game Six, and then we go to Game Seven in Phoenix in the desert, and we just see what's up. So you, so it was on the road. So you just, you're completely okay with the way your team uh, came out they and played against. No, them. they looked extremely lethargic. I didn't like the way uh, LeBron was distributing and not really driving to the hole, um, getting to the rack. I, I expected a little bit more of that. I also expect a lot more out of the role players, unfortunately, and they they let him down, um, well, unfortunately. But well, when you don't you play, know. when you don't when you don't play the six man of the year. He, he did. You decide not to. He not part of your playoff rotation. It's not part of the rotation because they have Andre Drummond and uh, Marcus Saul. So, is I mean, so that's not, not no knock on the coaching there. No knock on the coaching there. No, no knock on the coaching when you don't play no. the last season six, the reigning six man of the year. No knock on him. Well, no, he, his whole point on being on the roster was more. Addition by subtraction. <laughs> oh, was it? You're missing. You're missing. A sub subtraction of what? A uh, subtraction of the heart and soul of the Los Angeles Clippers on the other side. You know, those guys that have to put up those uh, black, uh, you know, cloaks in front of all those banners. Yeah, those guys. Forever well, they home. have, they have um, actually. That's got to be, that's gotta be tedious, right, Cam? To put What's up, that? To put up the black <laughs> banner. <laughs> the black covering over all those banners and numbers. God, how long does that take? <laughs> Four or five hours <laughs> before every game. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's it, 17 championships, like, it, like it probably 15 does. retired numbers, like there's no, 40 there's banners. No, I mean, how long does that take? There's no cloaks, by the way. It, it's, it's portraits that they put up. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, oh, I just I just oh, sent you I just sent you a picture. Uh, oh, I just sent okay. you a text. Text, okay. text. Thank you so much for explaining from the Clippers perspective. <laughs> <laughs> how that whole process works itself out. <laughs> I'm covering up all that championships. <laughs> <laughs> so again, let's let's really? stay on top. Let's stay on topic here. Let's stay on topic. Stay we're, on talking topic. About, so we're, we're talking about the Suns and right, the Suns. I, I mean Chris Paul. I mean, we have we see one one guy gutting it out, and then we see another guy who you know he goes he falls down at a minute before halftime, and we don't see him again for the rest of the night. Like, does that say anything about the competitive fire? Okay, that, well, uh, one I team mean, Cam, I mean, let's let's be perfectly honest with you. What? Neither one of those two players has really shown a lot of uh, ability to be healthy, um, you know, throughout a season. 
throughout their career. I mean, they both proved you're, 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 you're exactly right. You're you are exactly right. But as I stated, one person again is gutting it out, and he's every time he gets kind is of he? Nudged I mean, or, I mean, you know who knows what Chris Paul is doing, man? Come on. I mean, every time he gets nudged, he falls and starts flopping around like you know he he got uh, stabbed in the back. But then he's he's gutting it out. So you got to give him some credit for kind of toughing things out versus somebody who just falls down on the floor, goes to the locker room, and we don't see him again. Or the, or the other guy who's after the game decided just decides to walk to the locker room, you know, five minutes before the game's over. I mean, I don't know. I, said, I, I don't know who him. you're talking about. But if you're talking about LeBron James, he went in to get treatment to get ready for this game six. That's what he went to do. He went to go get treatment. Treatment. Five minutes before the game's over. Treatment. Who, who told you that? Who the told coach. You that? Frank Vogel came out and said he uh, wouldn't get treatment. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we we wouldn't expect Frank Vogel to kind of ice over anything, wouldn't that? Would we? Absolutely not. He's, he's, he's a, you know, straight shooter. And he just said, hey, man, LeBron was just trying to get a head start on his treatment. To be ready for game six. And then, so they they were at home. They were going to interrupt the treatment to get on the plane and travel and all that. So it wasn't like, you know, he's going to be. Uh, Ron sedated. has his own private, you know, charter, and I mean, he does things his own way. So I mean, you can't really, you know, speculate on on how the travel went. I mean, you know, LeBron's going to do what he needs to do when he needs to do it, and he's earned that right. Okay, so what's going to be different? Once upon a time, he played for eight straight championships. I don't know if you recall that. Once upon a time, once upon a time, and says, that was like what three years ago. So I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I mean, hey, I was pretty good in high school myself, man. Oh, okay. Well, LeBron actually good. won the NBA championship last year. Oh, well. Same. Again, it's a new, it's a new year. Okay. It, well, I but, mean, he went to the locker room this, to get treatment. Why are you making a big point about it, Cam? Because I thought it was show poor sportsmanship. No, not at all. No, he's trying no. to get a hand start on what's going on later. <laughs> I mean, he's already thinking for the future. That's how LeBron James is. He's already thinking ahead. He's thinking ahead. Well, what yeah. about being in the here and now and to kind of support your team as they take a butt whooping? Oh, they'll be, be fine. They'll be, be fine. There, they be there they know they need him, him to be day. healthy, right? They know they need LeBron to be healthy to have any kind of semblance of having a chance to win so that just, series, right? So just go do whatever you need to do to be ready. Huh? Exactly that. The king. King well, has his privileges. <laughs> it seemed like the king is taking all kind of privileges. He 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 bypasses the NBA um, COVID regulations to go celebrate with some movie stars and record. No, that was that, 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 that was that was to uh, market the league and support other fellow NBA players. I don't think the league. Had, I don't think any league, any part of the league was there. He's was, a humanitarian. Oh my god! Uh, what the, what, and a what philanthropist does, within. What does, selling, what does selling alcohol have to do with the, being a humanitarian? <laughs> help me with that. Because he's going to use the funds from oh, the selling man. of that alcohol to help. Oh, my goodness. So now, you're spending, now you're spending his money. communities oh, is he? With, throughout the United States. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> do you have that written down somewhere? It was that, did he send you a memo to say recite this? No. Every time this is brought up? Did he share? Did he share that with all Laker fans? Is that what I'm he saying? Did? I'm just saying. That's what, okay. That was his intentions to oh. use with the funds that he was going to oh. make from oh. the sales oh. of the alcohol. Interesting, interesting. Uh, let's see if we can find that on a spreadsheet. Humanitarian is a reason he's out uh, gallivanting with movie stars and, sh and shaking hands with, with record exactly, producers. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Help underprivileged communities. I wonder. The country. I wonder if that was on the 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 flyer that went out. <laughs> let's see, come help the humanitarian. I wonder if that was the the flyer that went out. Perhaps, I doubt it. I mean, I'm I sorry you didn't get one. I, yeah. You know. Yeah, I didn't get. I'm not. I'm not in a circle apparently. So, so we talked about the Suns is going to um, after tonight. It looks like they're going to move on and play the Denver Nuggets. You want to talk about that series, the Denver Nuggets and the Phoenix Suns? How, how the how that series is going to shake out? Oh man, that was a battle royale. And again, uh, hats off to Dame Dollar, Logo Lillard for doing everything that he could to hold no, no, them no, no, in no. as no, long no. as he could. No, no, I'm talking about the series, the the next round, Denver taking on the Phoenix Suns. Do you want to talk about that one? No, 
Oh, you don't want to you don't want to talk about that one. Just a look at no. a little look into the future. Not interesting. Nope. I mean, well, we know what that's going to happen, right? We're pretty. No, happy. actually, we, we we don't know what's going to happen. Do you know what's going to happen, Cameron? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. After tonight, it's going to be the Phoenix Suns moving on to, to play the matchup against the Denver Nuggets. And oh, what is it tonight? Tonight's Thursday. I think, that, I, I think that's so that your game general. Will be Sunday. I that think that's your Sunday. general prediction. Um, but of course, you have some skin in the game, being how emotionally invested you are into the other team in Los Angeles. So I can well, certainly see why you have that perspective. Well, we might as well talk about them. The Denver Nuggets, or excuse me, the Dallas Mavericks. In this series, as you kind of throw, try to throw a jab earlier, no team has won a home game yet. So if the series hold true, we're going to be in L.A. for game seven on Sunday between the if Dallas the series and holds, If the series holds true, right. But, Cam, it's, it's been five it's straight true. games where the, the home team hasn't won a game. I mean, you think that's just going to continue throughout the series? Well, like Forever? I'm saying, so that means the, no, that means I, the Clippers. I, I think the, that means I the think Clippers. The, uh, that means the the Clippers American Airlines win. Arena is going to be rocking in Dallas. Yeah, um, as it was, this as time, it was game five. Unlike last time, they're going to continue that momentum, and they're just going to overwhelm the Los Angeles Clippers. The Los Angeles Clippers win games when Kai, excuse me, when Kawhi Leonard plays perfect. When he plays just really, really good, they lose. <clears throat> yes, they yeah. perfect for them to win. Well, he was less than really, really good uh, yesterday, and now. Oh really wow! Good. Oh wow! You, you still mad at Kawhi for that for that jumper? That was the best he could do. No, I mean, come on. I, I mean, that was, was the best he could do. I mean, he had to get there it off while he could. There was a couple. There's a couple things I was not pleased with last night. Like, oh, I, wow. I don't, I don't know oh, watch, really? why you watch the game. Um, they, they didn't. I they did. I did see Bobon Magnanovic just really just dominate that interior. Uh, Front court of the Los Angeles Clippers, they had no answer for him. I don't know about dominate is a is a stretch. Oh, dominate! I mean, he was catching think, the ball up over his head. Just I, I think I think he, he scored. Silly. I think he scored nine Playing points. Kids. I think he scored nine points. So I don't, I don't that, know about that was, that was a an impactful nine points, wasn't it, Cam? Uh, again, as I stated to you in our pre in our pre show, oop, oop, Crowder comes out and hits a three to start the game off. Phoenix three. The Lakers zip. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, – I think that's a stretch because, as I stated in our pregame production meeting or pre-show production meeting, the best player on the court was Luka Doncic. And I don't think I've seen the best players play this season. It, I don't think I've seen a better player play basketball this season other than him. He's been truly amazing. So uh, I, I, I threw it out there earlier. Fans to the fans, who was the best player they seen play this season? And Cleveland, I will say Luka Doncic was the best player I seen play in the NBA this season in 2021. Would you agree or disagree? Uh, he was a tremendous player. I think probably the best player that I saw was Steph Curry and just his ability to will that team all the way into the uh, play-in tournament. Although they didn't end up advancing into the playoffs, I, I think uh, him just showing. Um, those flashes of brilliance and that MVP uh, stature was was amazing. So Steph Curry showed just as you say he played he showed flashes. Um, they he did good. I mean just to get that team into the playoffs. But the Dallas Mavericks man were number five in the in the Western Tough Western Conference. So that means that play Steph Curry did. His, his performance was just a little less than half of what Luca did this season. Um, also, last night, I'm not sure if you were familiar or you're aware of this, but Luca Doncic scored or assisted in 31 of the 37 Dallas Mavericks shots. Main shots, means, sure. That may that means. He's involved in every part of their offense. Every single part of their offense, Luca has something to do with that. And shame on the Clippers for not being able to 
respond to that. And and when I say shame on them, I mean they got to come kind of the the players, their star players, Kawhi and Paul, have more experience twice or three times as much experience as Luka himself. So you would think they'd be able to combat that somehow, some way. Yet they they had no answer for him. Um, Pat Beverly had a piece of him. Reggie Jackson had a piece of him. Uh, Nick Batum had a piece of him. Everybody got a piece of Luka. Everybody got a piece of Luka. So he left nobody um, underserved on that Clippers team. And it was just methodical and system. He systematically hunted out the mismatches just so he can. Uh, it's fourteen to five, Phoenix over the Lakers, with eighteen under four minutes to go in the game, or under four minutes gone in the first quarter. Eight thirty, eight thirty six, fourteen five, Phoenix. It was methodical how Luka Doncic sought out the mismatches, mismatch, whether it was whether he wanted Reggie Jackson on him, whether he wanted – he was trying to get away from Nick Batum, but whether it was Paul, uh, whether it was Chris Paul – or excuse me, Paul George, whether it was Kawhi Leonard, um, he, if he wanted Rondo on him, he sought out the mismatch and just backed him down and did the turnaround fadeaway on him, and it was cash money. He did shoot a lot of shots to get his 42 points. However, the guy is averaging 40 points in the in the playoffs. All against the Clippers, he's averaging 40 points. And it, it's I mean, it, it's one of the it's one of the most amazing playoff series we've seen. He I think um, going into <coughs> Sunday, Luca. Well, he, shit, he had a surpass. He had a surpass now, Michael Jordan, in his first um, – Michael Jordan had 325 points, I think, in his first eight playoff games. Lucas had a surpass that already because this was Sunday, and he had 299. He put up 40 points um, in Sunday's game, even though they lost. Uh, so he clearly surpassed that, and he added, he's added to this. The kid's 22 years old, man. And that's what's even more amazing, him being 22 years old. Uh, so what's what's more? And let's see if we can get some um, actual honesty and some objectivity from you. What's more amazing, the what he's doing on the court and how he's led his team to three and two over the favorite Clippers, or the fact that he's doing this at 22 years old? The play on the court or the, the age that he's doing in it? What's more impressive to you, Mister Cleveland? I would say that the age that he's doing it at, Cam, I mean, that is uh, the mark of, uh, you know, Hall of Fame caliber of brilliance. Um, the fact that he's doing it over the Clippers, I mean, I think it's inconsequential. Whoever he's doing it over is whoever he's doing it over. But the fact that he's doing it at the age that he's doing it at, it's only his, his second time being in the playoffs. And he already looks like one of those guys that you just, you know, can't really – stop and don't really have an answer for and if he's doing his thing then you know you're kind of out of his mercy you didn't really expect that from Luka Doncic coming into the league so at 22 I would say his age with which he's uh displaying this dominance is more impressive his his age it is it's in fact you know I'd be I guess I'd be a little bit more disappointed more upset if it was just um Average games, typical performance that's had them losing these games. I don't understand why you can't win a game at home. I don't understand why you don't get get up, even though it's an early game, one o'clock game. How you don't get up for game one, and you guys don't play with your, you know, give it your all. Um, I don't necessarily understand that, um, but to see knowing who they're playing, it's uh, knowing who they're playing against and seeing how he performs is is equally impressive. So so here's the stat here. In his first, first eight playoff games, all against the Clippers, by the way, Luka has 288 points. Closing in on Kareem's 325, Michael Jordan's three, uh, Kareem's two, 325, Michael Jordan's 325, Will Chamberlain's 299, and Bob McAdoo's two, 
95. So those guys in their face, first eight games. So I, I'd have to go see what they did in their first nine games because I don't know that Jordan put up 40 in his in his second or his ninth playoff game. I don't know what Kareem what Kareem did, but that's that's the um, community he's in right now. In his first eight playoff games, he he's in the Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, Bob McAdoo category. <laughs> That's so we're talking about. It's very story. impressive. That's very we're impressive company, Cam. And yeah. you know, after he gets done doing what he you know needs to get done tomorrow, I mean, there's going to be a lot of house cleaning and uh, questions to be answered on the uh, Clipper side. So can't uh, okay, wait for well, the ne- can't wait for the next show to uh, address address those questions. So, well, speaking of that, since you want to since you want to talk ahead on this series, but you didn't want to go to ahead on the next series. Um, speaking of that, what house cleaning would you pre- foresee? Oh man, you know, Steve Bum is going to be extremely irritated. All of his billionaire friends are going to be calling him, laughing at him. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's he's invested four billion dollars <laughs> into this, uh, just you know, investment that's just sputtering and just spitting out, you know, you know, coal fumes. I mean, it's just terrible. I mean, they have to go in a completely different direction. We don't know what Kawhi is going to do. Uh, Paul George is kind of in limbo. Kawhi ain't going nowhere. Paul George just we don't know that. You don't know that, Cam. Paul George just signed an extension at the beginning of the season. Paul George did. Kawhi yeah. Leonard did not. Yeah, he's not going and, nowhere. And, he, and, and he's he's not going to uh, handle all of the uh, negative criticism that comes out of losing in the first round. And Steve Ballmer is certainly not going to be happy about spending the two point five bill on the on the team and then throw another bill on the. Stadium and then all of that contract money, man, he's not happy. So there's been zero return on this investment. You have regressed in every single way. You've replaced Glenn Doc Rivers. AD goes to the AD goes to the bench with the Phoenix Suns up 14 to 7. And he's at the bench. He can't even sit down on the bench grabbing his uh, grabbing his inner thigh here. He tried to go. He tried to go play defense. He tried to play defense against uh, Devin Booker, who drives right by him. Although he missed a shot, AD is just comes up gimpy. Comes up gimpy, sitting in front of the bench, and just doesn't want to move. Um. Yeah, I I heard what you said about Bomber man. Uh, it, having a billionaire buddies calling him, having laughing at them because they can't win. you talking about sputtering, spitting up. They made the playoffs. They were number four in the West. They made the playoffs. That was that was not why Steve Ballmer bought this team. His pledge was to bring a championship to Los Angeles. The first it, one in the history of the Los Angeles Clippers. You think he spent $2.5 billion just to hang out and just be in the playoffs sometimes? You think he went out and bought a billion-dollar stadium just to hang out and be in the playoffs sometimes? You think he went out and got the best player – in the league just to hang out in the playoffs sometimes? You think he orchestrated a trade of somebody that had just signed, was a year into a four-year contract and made them purge that player to appease his other player that he was acquiring just to make the playoffs sometimes and to lose in the first round to lean back Luka? And the unicorn stops Porzingis, man. He is livid. Make no mistake about it. Don't when they the, lose this series, he is going to not, be livid, and everyone in that organization is on notice. Every single person. Don't you ever mention Christoph Porzingis in the same breath as Luka Doncic? Don't you ever do that again? No, don't, I was don't, I was don't, explaining don't you ever do that, that again. The dynamic duo that comes through. It's not, it's, they're there's no duel. Well they're in there's their no duel. They're in their zone. There's there's no duel. Okay. If, hey, well, if, hey, check this if, out, man. You or I play with Luca. We will we call that visit this conversation when they go down to Dallas and don't come out victorious and lose in the first round. And there's a bunch of speculation and questions answered. Well, who can't I wait? Mean, can't wait it. to hear your uh, interviews in those, uh, you know, those press conferences that you get. We'll, we'll see if you have the kitty gloves on or if you have the real mitts on. What are you talking about when we talk to Rick Carlisle? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking talk about when you talk to your dude. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk to him. You're going to have to ask some hard questions, man. 
Um, they still have a game to play. As we know, they go they go back to Dallas at tomorrow. At least one. At, at least at least one game. They they go back to Dallas tomorrow. And that's the time to kind of put on another show. And we see we we see what Kawhi did in Game Three and Game Oh, when game he four. plays per- when he plays perfect, they win. We saw what Kawhi when did. When he plays good, when four. he plays good, they don't win. We saw what Paul George did in Game Three and Game Four. So we know there's potential there. Okay. Oh, boom! It is now twenty-one to ten. As Booker just hits another three with uh, four and a half minutes to go in this first quarter between the Lakers and the Suns. So we saw we saw what we saw what these guys do when they're going on the road. They have their back backs against the wall. I talked to Zubac yesterday. What is it about the team? He said, "Man, when we're, when we're in a must-win situation, we win." That's all that's to it. Plain and simple in his Croatian, his Croatian uh, accent. When we're in a must-win situation, we win. Period. End of story. Okay. okay. okay cool. I'm sorry, Luca. I, I'm sorry. I even asked you the question, uh, uh, Zubac. Don't. I mean, don't you know? Don't come at the screen at me. And he's like, "Yeah, you should know this by now." Okay. Oh wow. Because so, because because you're in that inner circle that has that same that same belief and mindset. I mean, so I mean, I shouldn't. You know, he tried to shame me for even asking. No, I, yeah, I mean, because this supposed okay, to be on okay, board, man. I mean, I said, okay, Zubox. I, I, I feel I feel Zubox for you know being offended by your asking the question, <laughs> man. You should already know what's going to happen, and yeah. when it doesn't happen tomorrow, we will get a chance to talk on. <laughs> well, you again. It'll be, a, I, it'll be a tough conversation. Find, you know, I you honestly it, brought this on yourself with all that bad karma that you were thrown out when the I, Lakers I, uh, took the, took the loss in Phoenix. That's that's really I, what kind of brought this whole thing on. But I, 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 fi- I find I find <clears throat> I find it very interesting. You're willing to talk about the future when it comes to uh, the what is it the fourth and fifth seed, but when it's talking about the two and seven seed, you don't want to talk a few, about the future. In that playoff series, I find that kind of interesting. Isn't that kind of picking and choosing your your battles, isn't it? Now we win this game and we go to back to Phoenix and get ten. Okay. Well, it don't look like it right now. It's 27, 27 to ten, Phoenix. It don't look like you're going to win this game. Devin Booker just hit another three right between the eyes. <laughs> so it, 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 it's pretty. It's somber. It's quiet. I don't hear the building ain't rocking no more. It was rocking ten minutes ago when they when they brought out the crowd and they tried to flash the, the banners. It was rocking. It was probably rocking just like when the uh, Clippers played a game. <laughs> was it rocking like that <laughs> with the cutouts? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Had some famous cutouts up in. There. They got some famous cutouts. I saw Queen Latifah. I think I saw Roger Federer. Man, I saw some famous cutouts. Oh, this guy is this guy something else. I mean, when the Lakers play, I mean, they're they're the actual people. But I mean, just the way you get the Clippers do that cutout thing, man, that's that's really cool. It makes look like a Laker crowd, but it's not. It it does something. So, so we got a we got a couple of tough series going on. And we just let you want to talk about the Nuggets and how they just just dispatched the Portland Trailblazers. Um, Hard fought, man, and they they really had to dig deep um, into their roster, and some players had to come up that I was not expecting. Michael Porter Jr. He kind of seems like he wants it. Stay healthy, my friend. You Austin know. Rivers. Austin Rivers. Austin kinda, Rivers. My we goodness. We claim in his name. Uh, you know he's proven. That I don't know if he, I, don't, I don't know how much of a name he had per se, but I mean, you know, he certainly is looking valuable. Like you know, something that you can definitely use down the stretch. Um, yeah, with, with Murray out, you know, everybody counted Denver off when Murray went out. But since so I, then, I was one of them for sure. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I certainly was. But since then, they brought in um, Aaron Gordon. Who is you know he's great defensively. And congratulations to Aaron Gordon is showing a little bit more of his game, man. A little bit you know of a repertoire. You know he hit some threes here and there. He's you know he's athletic, so he can get boards, man. He keeps you in it, and he seems very engaged uh, playing in uh, you know important games. Yeah, yeah. So he, he's he's a he's a fixture. You wouldn't you know definitely not the first, second, or third. Um, option on the team but he's definitely uh he's definitely out there to get 
take advantage of opportunities when he when he has them on um, upon him. And then you know, with the addition of uh, Austin Rivers, as we mentioned, it makes Denver a very solid team. And we'll see what they do in the next series, but against uh, probably the Phoenix Suns more than likely. But uh, we'll we'll see how things transpire. So you just just to hear all you're talking about, we got the Clippers and the Clippers in a must win situation going to Dallas. You got Dallas winning that game. Yes. They win in game six. Yes. They break the streak of all home teams yes. uh, losing. Yes, they win the next game. Interesting. And that that's because of Luca. That's because of lean back Luca. Um, he had some nerve damage in his neck. He went to uh, his uh, acupuncturist, Yen Louis. They fixed his neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Yen Louis, and, and, and he's all better now. The only th- the only way he would have seen Lin Yu- uh, Lin Yui is if he was at Nobu, because <laughs> that's where Luca's been <laughs> on Malibu to kind of get. He's been getting that kind of love. So. Um, but yeah, they they've been Luca's playing out of his mind. In all in all straight up seriousness, Luca has been the best basketball player I've seen this season play. Um, it, it's it's been amazing. Uh, his game in the, his game in the playoffs has just been nothing short of spectacular. So Cleveland, let's take a little break here, man. And when we come back, we're gonna get into our NFL topics. I mean, Julio's still out there. I understand there were some conversations with Julio and. Uh, I think Julio called up. Um, he called up and wanted to be part of that John Snyder Sierra meeting, and I think maybe you know something that came out of that meeting. I do, uh, so, Cam. I do. I so do. let's let's talk about that here in a little bit. Cool. We're going to talk about uh, the mini camps, uh, NFL mini camps. We're going to talk about what the what the Eagles has done and Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't think. I don't think they're on their way to Europe quite yet. I don't know if you t- had a chance to look at, uh, look and see what they got going on downtown Jacksonville, but I don't think they're on their way to Europe quite yet. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so, Cleveland, let's take a little break here, man. We'll come back. We're going to have a conversation about the NFL. All right, those of you tuning in on YouTube, man, again, hit us up with this. So hit me up on Twitter and you can respond to my question Who is the best in? NBA player you've seen play this season. My Twitter is what's good in sport. What's good, the letter in sport. Hit me up. Let me know who is the best NBA player you've seen play this season. Cleveland, what's your information? It is at Cleveland Wander on Twitter and Cleveland Steel on Instagram. Go ahead, hit, hit him or me up, and we will respond. I want to know who is the best NBA player you've seen play this season. We're going to come back with uh, NFL topics here shortly. All right. Okay, Cleveland. So, as I mentioned, man, I understand there was a, a meeting with Sierra and um, John Snyder and try to see what's going on. See, maybe uh, Julio called up there to see what's happening because we know Sierra making the decisions up there. So, what what was the word of that meeting? Yeah, I was uh, privy to kind of the the uh, involvement of that conversation. And from what I've heard, what my sources tell me, Cam, is that they made it very clear that they were committed to running the ball, you know, 60, 65% of the time. Um, they already have two Pro Bowl receivers and that uh, the most they were going to be able to give Julio Jones 
was going to be somewhere between four and six million dollars. And if he was okay with that signing, um, then you know, welcome. He can be part of the rotation. Uh, he can come to compete Thursday and see if he can get a, a spot on the roster. You didn't just say the Seattle Seahawks are committed to running the ball. You didn't just say that. I did. They they have already established that, which is how all the whole thing came out. Cam, do you remember how this whole thing even got started was the fact that they wouldn't let Russ cook as much as he wanted to cook. They wanted to run the ball more. That's what happened in the Rams game. That's where all the atrimony came from. So they simply just let Julio Jones know that is the climate, the environment here. This is what we can do for you. Four to six mil. If you're down, let's get down. You can so be a third or fourth so, receiver so, so, in this so, offense, and so we can to, try and do some things. You could be the but primarily what we're going to do is try and run the ball. He could be the third or fourth receiver in that offense. <laughs> third, third, third or fourth receiver in that uh, offense. Clayton, yeah. Come on, stop it. Uh, right now, it's uh, 33 to 12 Phoenix Suns over the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, that's not good, Ken. 33 Devin to 12? Booker, Devin Booker has six threes in the first quarter. Okay. With with the let under a minute to go. Well, I mean, you know, the, maybe the basketball gods have spoken and let the chips fall where they may in the Western Conference. That's how it gets down. Mm-hmm. If uh, it's time to anoint Devin Booker as one of those dudes, then maybe it is. He's not. He's not the best we've seen this season. So, nonetheless. <laughs> None, nonetheless, man, where I'm at, I, I wish I could turn this camera around so you could see kind of what I see in here. It's kind of funny. This is very comical. Um, Cleveland, come on, man. You, you guys, please tell me Sierra and Sierra didn't disrespect um, Julio Jones by telling him he could be the third or fourth receiver in the, in the rotation. He certainly, he certainly, she certainly did, Cam. She let him know on no so, uncertain terms. DK Metcalf is that dude. Tyler Lockett is his uh, shotgun. We just drafted a cat, Erskine. Super fast, so, great punt returner. Great. And you, you got him. You got him being better than. Uh, you got him better being better than Julio. Uh, all. Uh, oh no, not Batman? this. Of course not. I mean, let's see how healthy Julio about? is. No, Julio is thirty-three years old. Cam. Okay, and and those, he and would walk in. He, will, he would so walk you already, you already know, he, he would, You already know he's kind of you know. He would walk in as the number one receiver on that team. What are you talking about, third or fourth? He would not walk in as the number one receiver on that team. That's that's probably part of the problem. I think that's what Sierra and John were trying to, you know, convey to him is that you're not going to walk in here and be that dude. You have to earn it. That's what all the Seahawks do. So, okay, Cleveland. So you say that's where all the problems started because they wouldn't let Russ cook. Right. He was a Hall of Fame – excuse me, he was – an MVP caliber player through eight weeks of the season last year, right? Yes. And when they decided to start running the ball, not only did he did that drop his it's combination cam of, uh, they, uh, of, uh, of getting back did. more committed to the run, and also uh, the league figured him out. No, the league figured him out, or did they take the ball out of his hands? Which one was it? Combination of the two. So if he has better. Uh, talent on the offensive side of the ball, do they figure him out as easy? If yeah, he has, tremendous talent on the offensive actually, side of the ball. He didn't have I, don't, Julio, I don't think adding another have receiver Julio when you're trying to have, be focused and concentrated on the run is necessarily the answer to that. Well, it's 36 or 14. It's 36 or 14. I mean, I mean, if, if you're talking about, you know, Derrick Henry, oh, well, yeah. Let's do that. Why? Could you, so you could just run, run the pound the shit about out of Ezekiel him? Elliott, okay, well, yeah, let's do that. So you can just pound the hell out of him? That's that's why. You, Cleveland, you guys don't have the running backs. You don't have Derrick Henry. You don't have Ezekiel Elliott. Exactly you have, that. We you don't need have a running Alvin back Kamara. to establish right. the running game. We right. don't so need a wide so receiver saying, to be in an offense when you're trying to establish a running game. But you keep saying you want you you want to you want to establish a running game, but you have Chris Carson in your backfield. That you that's not no way to establish your running game. So when you when that's your that's the talent in your backfield, you have to adjust and you have to look to who's okay. better talent to on be the field. To be completely, to be completely transparent. Yeah. Please tell me how does Julio Jones help this team if this team is committed to the run? 
It that already is, has two Pro Bowl receivers. This is what I'm saying. And they, they want to throw the ball less. They want to throw the ball your, less, not You more. need to change your philosophy. Your philosophy of uh, running when you, you have – You bring in an offensive when, coordinator that's run-oriented, and now you want the offensive coordinator to completely change their philosophy to be pass-oriented and let Russ cook. That's the exact same thing you didn't want to do last year, which led to all of this acrimony. Who didn't want to do that? Who who didn't want to let Russ cook? You saying Russ didn't want to cook? Pete Carroll didn't want to let Russ cook. So oh, so maybe maybe it's Pete Carroll who needed to be on on the on the way out. Who needed uh, a ticket at well? Say, I, be, I didn't, at I, didn't say that, I didn't say that. I didn't say that out loud. Yeah, yeah. I drink I drink the Pete Carroll Kool Aid, and we'll see yeah, what we, happens. We, we, we I'm just know saying, Julio Jones. I don't think he's the answer. No, because they have a flawed philosophy. They have a philosophy from when, when was it? The 2000, a college philosophy from 2007. Okay, this is a different time when you have the talent that you have in DK Metcalf and you have the talent that you have in in uh, the pocket rocket, uh, rocket, Tyler, who's your, Lockett. Talk, Tyler Lockett, who's your slot receiver. You have DK Metcalf, who's kind of quasi established himself as a number two receiver. You put Julio in there as your number one receiver. That allowed that opens up your offense. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but you have three of these receivers. Now you have your 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 deep threat in Metcalf. Now you have Tyler Lockett who can work under the middle. You have Julio Jones who can work under the middle on the other side. So you're gonna have somebody open. You're gonna allow Russ to drop back and fire at one of these guys. You use your oh, so you let Russ cook. So you use your you use your. So you get uh, Julio Jones, and then you change your offense philosophy because you have Julio Jones. Because you you were trying to revert back to your previous. So you don't philosophy, have which running backs. Run what ball. don't you understand about that? You don't have running backs to pound the ball with. You do not have it. Carson gets hurt every three weeks. You know what? Maybe two can use him. Maybe two can use him oh, down in Miami. Nothing. Ain't this something? You know what? <laughs> See, and mentor you, and mentor Jalen Waddle. You know those. So, you know those Alabama uh, receivers. So, so you so you want to argue with me and tell me how wrong my philosophy is? But you guys are your philosophy is ignorant. I guess That's what yeah, take him down three hundred five. Match him up with Jalen. So. Talk all if, saving stories. I think it would be I think it would be an ideal fit because you need you if if you're not gonna if you're not gonna quote unquote let Russ cook, you haven't your offensive line probably hasn't improved that much. So you need to get him a receiver that at least he has quality receiver to throw to. That maybe that keeps him happy. He has quality no, receivers still do. Yeah, TK make happen uh t in uh Tyler Lockett. What's wrong? Not quality, both had a thousand wrong? yards. What's wrong with adding a Hall of Fame receiver to the mix? Nothing. Four to six mil. Let's chat. Oh, man. So we got there, the you go. there you go. Okay. All right. You guys are going to be in trouble again. I mean, with this fucking knuckleheadedness. Why, why, why don't you want him? You ever, you ever tell me why you don't want him in Miami? We take him in Miami. I'm not paying him. 50, I'm not paying him the 15 mil. Oh, so we, you want him in we, Miami for the four to six? And I just said, but when no, I said it, it was no, wrong. No, no, when he, I said he, it, it was he's wrong. He's worth the. He's worth the eight to twelve. He's worth the eight to twelve. Okay, and, so we can, you, so, and we can use a coach. So and we can give use him a coach. So you yeah, give him twelve. Yeah, yeah, we'd give him twelve, and we can we can use okay, a, well, a coach have, on the field. Hey, look at this. Again, I I think the in all honesty, I think. I think the best place for him to go, and if I was uh, Gutenkoops, is that his name? Uh, Gutenkoops in Green Bay? Uh, I sign Julio tomorrow. No. The best place for him to go is out in San Francisco, and that, that would be a problem San, for me. San Francisco. I, I, I had heard How that, that he, the best place? How is that the best place for him to go? Because it's a great fit for him. He would, he would oh, really be a problem. A great, explain how that's a great problem. How, explain how that's a great fit for him. Playing with a rookie quarterback? No, he'd be playing with Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, I'm not sure how long Jimmy's going to be there. Oh, well, it will be at least through next season. You're pretty sure about that. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy's going to get hurt before the you season. Think that, you think the quarterback from North Dakota State is ready to start in the NFL this year? Uh, with the number three pick, they didn't draft him to sit on the bench. Um, I know that. They didn't draft him to sit on the bench very long. Let me add that. They didn't draft him to sit on the bench. Hey, you know, Cam, long. there's not a whole lot of Andrew Lux out there that's going to start their first yeah, game. Oh, a lot of who, a lot of who? There's not a lot of who? There's not a whole lot of Andrew Lux out there to start their first game. Oh, you know oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there's not. You're right. 
But again, and he's not he, one of them. He's not starting the first game. And if they the didn't 49ers had the had Julio Jones, who knows what Jimmy G could be able to do? I'm a little I mean, bit concerned. They, don't they have a don't they have a, a stable receiving core? Do they? Why are you asking the question? If they had one, you wouldn't be asking the question like that. Check something out. Go ahead and, and, and I'm let Cleveland cook because I don't know that that's the best. Uh, that's the best play for him. Well, whatever. I mean, you know, as a as a twelve and a, a Seahawks fan, I'm not real happy about the idea of having Julio Jones come up here for a whole bunch of money. I um, mean, he, he consistently why has hamstring issues. Money? Why are you worried about money? That's not your money. I'm not spending other people's money. I'm just saying, given what you can't get because you are allocating those funds to the salary cap for someone that's not really going to play that many games and not going to be that impactful, I don't I don't like the move. If they want to do it, fine, but I'm not a big fan. So at the receiving court, they got uh, Kendrick Bourne, Brandon Ayuk, Richie James. I guess they could use him in San Francisco. Um, yeah, I guess that all they got. They got more. Oh, you, three. I, I, I'm sorry, I thought you had some number one dynamic receiver. They, they receiver got more than three receivers. This showing me right now is showing me three receivers. They got more than three freaking receivers. Okay, well, if you can't name them, then I'm pretty sure Julio Jones is better. Uh, they just they signed Travis Benjamin as another re receiver. Okay, I'm pretty sure uh, Julio Jones is better than him. River Craycraft, <laughs> who's a he's a Cougar. Benny Fowler, uh, Spartan. Now are you still looking around? You oh, haven't heard any better than Julio Jones yet. I at least gave you two names that are Pro Bowlers. Jalen Hurd. There's no Pro Bowlers Spartan. over there. Man, I, I don't out, know none of these can't, receivers. Can't, can't. Slow your brain down, man. Don't try and rack <laughs> your brain about trying to find a 49er receiver better than Julio Jones because they don't have one. Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel. There you go. Muhammad Sanu. There you go. Muhammad Sanu? They're not, uh, these are guys that are better. I just thought they had some better talent than receiver. Oh, Trent, okay. Trent Sherfield. He was looking, going down the list and seeing this list of people on their team. I thought they did. I thought they legitimately had better receivers. I yeah, think. No. Debo well, Samuels, Debo Samuels, and and IU. That's the that's the two guys I was thinking that's about. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I think Julio Jones upgrades that receiving core tremendously. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I, I think he should go to uh, Green Bay. If I'm if I'm uh, Green Bay and I'm serious about keeping uh, Aaron Rodgers on the fold, I go sign him because Green Bay's problem is they've been like uh, Carolina was with. Um, our our guy. What's your guy's name? Uh, Cam Carson Newton. Palmer. No, they've been with. Uh, they've been with, like Carolina was ashamed of, uh, allergic to getting talent for Cam Newton. Um, oh, sure. That's that's what the the Packers have been with Aaron Rodgers. So let's. Well, show they got them. a Pro Bowl receiver in Devontae Adams, which is helpful. Yeah, but if we put a if we put a Hall of Famer on the other side, won't that be just as helpful? I mean, they never did. They ever replace? Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't think it's a talent issue over there in Green Bay. They've been at the NFC Championship two consecutive years. I think it's a philosophy issue. Uh, I, I think if again, with you get that second receiver there, you kind of open things up a little bit. Um, and again, it speaks to it speaks to who you are about getting talent for um, improving your roster. And we have another three pointer going up. <laughs> it is forty five to eighteen. <laughs> Phoenix over the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> 45 to 18, bro. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop reading the score out because I see my man getting depressed. He might not want to yeah, finish the close. show. That's not he close. Might, he, wow. he, he, he might not want to finish the show. I might walk out. I might have to go and uh, get some support <laughs> to uh, you know, LBJ uh, and those guys, man. This yeah, ridiculous. yeah. They might be calling you up. Okay. Wow. All right, man. So I thought um, I heard I, some rumblings about him going to the Titans, which I thought was kind of odd because I don't I don't know that he'd be happy. Oh, just make Ryan Tannehill a four or five thousand yard thrower. <laughs> I don't That's know. That would do. I don't know if he'd be happy with that. 
But Cleveland, you know, speaking of wide receivers, man, um, we got a list, and I want to see if you can come up with this. Who's on this list of exciting new wide receiver quarterback tandem for two thousand? Oh, shit. For 2021. This list, I'm not sure what list you're saying, but this list is in no particular order. Um, Because it's not, damn it, it's not how I would have this list. I'll put it like that. Um, I think the number one tandem that I'd be looking for is Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Can this college, can this college tandem can they actually have success in the NFL? Like that'd be, I think that would be the number one. Um, Tanda, what do you think about that? Not necessarily number one. What are some of the other options, Cam? Um, Zach Wilson, Corey Davis, they'll be waiting. No, they're not, that's not it. No, nope, that's not they're, it. They're down there. Sam Darnold, DJ Moore, they're eight or no, nine. That's not it. Uh, what is it? Uh, Damon Jones, David Jones in New York to Kenny Galladay. They're in that seven or eight. Right. No, range. no. Matt, Matt Ryan, Kyle Pitts. That's probably no. top five. That's no. probably top five. No. Carson Witts, Michael Pittman Jr. No. That's top five. Um, Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith. You know, Cam, it's really funny. I just got a text from Steve. Mm-hmm. He's listening to the show. Yeah. You know, see what I'm talking about, Steve Nelson? Yeah, yeah. President so, of uh, Tough Nation. I, again, I have I have this list in no particular order. And he again. knows that in your heart of hearts, if you're really true and down, what you should be saying, if you're really truly down what, with well, Jalen, Nation 305. Jaden Roddle would be good, you know, with uh, Deshaun Watson. He would be a good fit for Deshaun. Man, you're fired, dude. You're, you're comes, never getting back to on the bandwagon, bro. <laughs> you're man. never, ever getting back on it. Man, of course we want to see what Tua and, and Jalen can do. We want to see the the re, reunion between them two. That should be number one. Uh, is that number one in the whole that's NFL? Number one. In the that's whole num- NFL. That's, that's the number one most exciting that's, if they do what they're be- supposed to do. That's not be. They're not going to be better than Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Come on, man. The, stop it! They're not going to be better than that one. Uh, Matt Ryan, Carl Pitts, um, Kyle. That's Pitts. why Steve. Matt, that's why Steve keeps blowing up my phone. <laughs> He's like, "What is this dude talking about?" Uh, wow. Carson, Carson Wentz, and Michael Pittman Jr. You're not interested in seeing how that works. Jalen Hurts and Devonte Smith. You're not oh. interested to see that work. Wow. Okay. More, Al- more Alabama nonsense. Come on. What about you? here's your, what about your guy, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Terry McLaurin? Well, yeah. Oh, oh. Now we went, just yeah. McLaurin. My, my, my. Now, we, now we got him over there drooling okay. a little bit. Okay. Now they're, they're, that's probably four, that's probably six, six or seven. And then I know you're not going to be happy about this, but Matt Stafford or any of these Rams receivers. It's going to no. be interesting to see how that works Zero. out. You don't even have to name them. No. Yeah, you, you don't because you can't name one. Is it going to be Robert Woods? Is it going to be Cooper Cup? Is it going to be uh, Atwell, Tutu Atwell? They're going to have choices. But you, Jalen Hurts, you don't want to see what Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith no. can do? Curious. I mean, Jalen uh, is it? They're angling for Jalen Hurts not to be the quarterback, but I think I think I I want to see him get a chance. I want to see him to get a legit chance to play quarterback. Because he didn't get a legit he didn't get a legit chance last year. No, but they kind of yanked him. They yanked him and pulled him out a time or two. They kind of he didn't get a, a full season, a full off season. I mean, he played, but they they replaced. Him I mean, I think Tua Tagovailoa. Sometimes you had to kind of pull him to the sideline and kind of give him a little bit of tutelage as well. I mean, sometimes Alabama quarterbacks just need a little bit of support. You know, they need to take a you know a minute of time out and just kind of you know absorb what's going on in their environment and just kind of try and get oh, better at their craft. Oh my goodness! That's all. You know who didn't need it? You know who didn't need a uh, a hug? Somebody put their arm around him and kind of talk to him. Joe Burrow. They said well, I mean, he's from LSU. Here's the football, I mean, here's the you know, football from, go play. I mean, you know, he, you know, they, he came they, from the they, Bayou. That's that's a, a whole said, different go, system. 
here's the ball. Go. Why play. are you always trying to make comparisons, Cam? I'm, I'm not just saying what Alabama quarterbacks go through. You right. can't make those kind of comparisons. Not every quarterback that comes out of the SEC is the same. All that I'm saying is that sometimes Alabama quarterbacks need just a little bit more care, a little bit more, <laughs> you know, coddling, if you will. And that's what you know I'm saying. Have to, and that's exactly what I don't have time for to coddle receivers, e- uh, coddle quarterbacks. Either you can play or you can't. Okay. Either you okay. Can well, make all I'm saying is, either, all I'm saying is, I thought Jalen had ample opportunity last year, in the same way that Tua had ample opportunity. The difference is. Tua actually had Ryan Fitzpatrick so that when things weren't going well, they could say, hey, man, why don't you step back and see how Ryan does it and see if we have better results. Jalen didn't have that, but at the same time, you know, we'll see what happens next year. I don't have a whole lot of confidence in uh, in Jalen, but, you know, hopefully he proves me wrong, man. You he proves you and- all the doubters and detractors wrong. You and Fitzpatrick, man, I don't know what kind of relationship you guys got going on. That's that's what I don't know. It must, it's something a little special. It, it's it's something uh, out of this world, man. You guys, I mean, did you come well, from hey, the, the offseason with you And on that note, Cam, you and Tua need to get a little bit better relationship going because you don't seem to really – he doesn't feel your love and support, man. And he's going to need it going forward. Yeah, he needs to show me some wins. That's all I can say. Okay. Show, well, that's, show that's, me wins. See, and that's why I – see my phone? I thought my phone keeps just blowing up, man. It's, it's, show just, me Steve, it, it's just Steve saying, wow, that dude can't what? be a part of us. Because what? Because what? I don't see wins? So listen, uh, Jalen Hurts was one in three last year as a starter. Okay. One in, one in three. 50, what is this? 50% completion ration, uh, ratings. Um, uh, 77 QB, uh, 41 QBR, 77 quarterback rating. Ugh. So he got he got some game action, but I, I can't say I can't say that four games, four starts out of fifteen is actually you know game time field. You know what I'm saying? I can't say okay. that's that's the well. Legit. Hey man, roll him out there next year and we'll see what happens. Yeah, he, he's gonna be the starter next year. I mean, I. As, a, as I'm looking at the depth chart, it looks like there'll be three Alabama uh, quarterbacks starting in the NFL next year. Uh, you know, maybe first game, all three of them. Should be interesting to see how they do. Well, you got you got Mac, Mac Brown or Mac uh, – what's his name, Mac Jones starting in, in New England? Mac Jones in New England, uh, Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia, and Tua Tagovailoa in Miami. I mean, we'll see who has the best record of all those uh, Alabama studs at quarterback. So, so you don't have um, Cam? Cam won't even start. No, Cam. Cam Cam job. He's he's a backup. They they are they already said Cam's not going to start. Or I mean, he, he might he may start, but by week uh, two or three. Yeah. Okay. Um. So mini camps, man. Any any uh, what's going on in mini camps that you want to talk about? You seen any action? Any news that in? Excite you and pressure at all? Nope, nothing to report. It's too early. Okay, Jack signed Farrell Cooper. What, what's about? What do you think about the story? Arians asked Brady to scout receivers, and then so he can critique his ability to critique receivers. What do you think about that story? Nothing. <laughs> not, not interested in what they have to say, huh? No. Um. Now you say you want your commitment to the running game. Well, why don't you guys sign? I didn't, say, I didn't I, I, first off, I didn't say I wanted that. I said that is what the Seahawks yeah. want a well, commitment to the running game. Well, you're bought in, like, oh boy, oh boy, this kid is on fire. This kid is on fire. He seven three pointers, 55 to 31. Phoenix is over, is up over the uh, Lakers. Devin Booker has seven. I repeat, seven three pointers, and it looked like oh he, he crossed the line. He he just shot a non three and missed. <laughs> he just shot a non three and missed. But uh, yeah, he he's going crazy. So okay, so going with your philosophy with your boys, choosing to their focus on the running game. Why don't you guys go ahead and sign Frank Gore? Then? Why don't you add Frank Gore to the mix? Because Frank Gore is forty seven years old. Okay, he's he's still better than any re- running back on your no, list. No, he's not. No, he's not. He Chris Carson is better than Frank Gore. Yes. 
cut it out. Yeah, you and you show me your show me your punch bowl. Your punch bowl or your Pete Carroll punch bowl. Do you got his name on it? Is his name written on? You got a big USC logo. Show me your punch. It's bowl. like a Gatorade bottle. It's just it's just Pete Carroll Kool-Aid. I'll bring it out next show. It, my goodness gracious. That you <laughs> he gets you to the bowl and you you just he can't do no wrong. He can't make a bad decision. That's what I'm being is that what you want to finish? No, I mean, he certainly can. And I mean, certainly the way the season ended last year and all of the acrimony that went on between him and Russ. I mean, I'm not saying that Pete is, uh, you know, certified 24 karat goal. He's made some mistakes. I, I think mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into all of his, uh, you know, sorted pass, but, you know, fourth and one at USC against Texas. Terrible play call, you know. Uh, one yard from a uh, back-to-back Super Bowls, terrible play call. So I, I, I'm not going to say he's above reproach by any means. I'm just saying up here in the 206, the 12, drink the Pete Carroll Kool-Aid, and we hope for the best. And just hope for the best. Okay. Usually usually we have really, you know, good success, and, you know, we get to the playoffs and we give ourselves an opportunity to, you know, perhaps get to a Super Bowl, but, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. Is that what you're saying? I am saying it is a year transition. We will see what happens. This is going to be a very interesting year because, A, what's going to happen with Pete Carroll? B, what's going to happen with Russell Wilson? Hmm. We don't okay. Know. Okay. So, man, Jacksonville, man, they're pretty, they're doing something pretty uh, dramatic down there in downtown Jacksonville. Investing billions of dollars to create this new downtown stadium arena. Have you seen this, Cleveland? Not billions. It was it was actually kind of on the cheap side from what I saw. I think it was like four hundred million. Their 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 current stadium is pretty nice, and you know I think uh, you know the owners is kind of trying to you know manipulate manipulate the system a little bit. Um, he really wants to go to England. He really wants to go to England <laughs> and be that first team on that on that continent and just have all of that revenue. So so he went cheap with the what is the four hundred fifty yeah. million four hundred and fifty yeah. million dollar uh arena. Yeah, what's that getting built? I mean <laughs> I mean you know what I'm saying? It's set a low, right? You didn't want to oh, say this that, guy. Man. I mean, like, what are you get for? Well, every every stadium every stadium can't be uh what was Jerry it, Century, World the Century Link or Lumen Field. Every every stadium no. can't be like that. When Jerry built his stadium like fifteen years ago, it was like a billion dollars. Well, so far I just went one point five billion. Okay, so, so uh, a third of that. What are you getting? The, what? Wait, we're we're talking about Jacksonville, Florida versus Arlington, Filling Texas, Filling and Inglewood, California. Uh, so they they been, already got hot so tubs and pools at their current stadium. I mean, you haven't been to Jacksonville, Florida, apparently. He, it, Jacksonville is the the your dollar goes a lot further in Jacksonville, Florida than. Arlington, Texas, and Inglewood, California. Let me just put okay. That's just, fine. Let's that's just put fine. it like that. But Cam, what I'm saying is, that's not a deterrent. What, he's not building anything there. He doesn't really want to commit to it. He just wants them to commit. <laughs> <laughs> he was multi million dollar de- development project intended to enhance the downtown area and team facilities. Wow. You're not, you're not buying into that. You you're, you're no. saying. <laughs> that, that and, the- and it was and from what I saw, it was on the request of Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is only going to be there three years, man. Don't 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 invest a half a billion dollars on Urban Meyer, man. He's not oh, long term wow. solution to this. Oh wow, you should. <laughs> so you're telling the whole city of Jacksonville put hold up, put put a hold on this project. Oh yeah, pump the brakes <laughs> on all of that, man. You're putting a oh wow, you're cold. You're a cold one. So again, <laughs> Jacksonville needs something, and Cleveland's dumping uh cold water all over their parade right now because they they had the plans of doing something really nice and trying to keep their uh football team in, in um in there are bad news yeah they're going to london yeah well long flights every once in a while but just every once in a while okay all right well well man that cleveland we're, we're gonna have to see what's gonna happen man i'm holding you to that what is it uh june 3rd 2021 cleveland says the jacksonville jaguars are on their way to london we're gonna see how Eventually. this works out. We're gonna see Eventually. how this works out. Yeah. Um, all right, Cleveland, let's take a quick break here. When we come back, man, we're gonna talk about uh this date in history. 
And then we got some random talk, topics we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, the Celtics uh, making their changes. I want to ask you about that trade. See what your thoughts are that Luca for Trey Young trade. And would you do that again? Excuse me. Also, we're going to talk about uh, A-Rod. What's A-Rod's relationship with the fans up there in Seattle? Um, and he's he's trying to make it. He's trying to improve the relationship. Like you know, you you can't go back with your ex, right? And then once you break up with your another ex, you know, you try to go back and just kind of smooth things over with 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 one of the favor one of your favorite exes and see how far that can go, how far that can go. And that's what A Rod's doing right now. He's trying to smooth one over with his long with his long. Maybe that was his first love with Seattle Mariners. He's trying to smooth things over with the Seattle city of Seattle. Let's see. I want to know from somebody up there how this is going over. So we're going to talk about this, and maybe we get into Kwame Brown uh, continuing his rants here. Uh, let's take a little quick break, Cleveland. When we come back, we're going to talk about all of that. All right, Cleveland, here we go, man. We're going to talk about um, This Week in History, one of my favorite segments of the show. Give, give the fans a little history lesson, some of the things that either they forgot about or just don't pay attention to anymore. But in June 1st, 1862, Cleveland, slavery was abolished in all U.S. possessions at that time was all U.S. counties. In 1862, slavery was actually abolished. In 1863, Harriet Tubman led an army of guerrillas into Maryland that freed, that freed over 700 slaves because most slave owners didn't acknowledge or acknowledge the ruling that slavery was ended and abolished in 1862. So Harriet Tubman, I don't know if you've seen the movie, but uh, or read the books on Harriet Tubman, but you know she did some things uh, for the for black people that you know she risked her lives. She risked her life actually, uh, risked her family's life. Less kind of instead of staying in the what it was in, in the on the plantation, she said, "No, I have to go. I have to leave. I have to make myself free." When I get free, I'll come come back and get you, and then I'm gonna once I become free, I'm gonna come and get a, a whole bunch of other people. So it was, it was pretty impressive what Harriet Tubman um, did back in the day, and I'm sure you're familiar with some of her actions, aren't you? Um, something else, Cleveland. Something I was uh, was not aware of until kind of doing some research. The Poor People's Campaign, the Poor People's March on Washington in June of 1968 was a march on Washington for, it was organized by Martin Luther King, but obviously he, he got assassinated in April of that year. So it was carried out by the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. In the um, in the wake of uh, King's assassination, the campaign demanded economic and human rights for poor people of diverse backgrounds. After presenting an organized set of demands to Congress and executive agencies, participation set up a three thousand person protest camp in Wa on the Washington Mall, where they stayed for six weeks in the spring of nineteen sixty eight. Was not aware of that. So they kind of formed a sit-in, if you will, at the nation's capital. Did anybody storm storm the Capitol building? Any was any glass broken? Was any police of lives uh, put in harm's way when when they formed a sit-in at the Capitol? 
No. Okay. Um, so we know King was uh, about the peaceful protest. So in honor of him, the 3,000 person protest camp was set up at the Washington Mall uh, for nearly six weeks um, in, in regards to the civil rights in, in, in the efforts of the civil rights movement. So that was pretty impressive, man. I was not aware of, I was not aware of that actually. Um, even after Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, uh, some of his efforts were um, continuously recognized and carried through. So kudos to him, kudos to the people who uh, carried that out as an example of the peace that could be done uh, within America. Also, I, also we got to acknowledge, it's, it's not on my list, but uh, the burning of Tulsa, Oklahoma, we got to acknowledge that that was done in 1921. Uh, Black Wall Street that was done. Um, it's uh, you know another uh, story of people being what's the word uh, intimidated by the success of black folks. So you're, you're um, I'll give you the quote earlier. I'll give you the quote now then instead of giving it to you later. But the quote I saw this week, Cleveland, is if you just smile, people are going to be jealous of you. So just smile. And people are going to be jealous of your happiness when you smile, so just smile. If they, are, they already don't like you when you're smiling and you're enjoying your life regardless of what you're smiling about or the challenges that you endure, if you just smile, people are going to be jealous. So just do that. Be happy and, and, and be happy with what you're doing. And smile about what you're doing, and you're going to make a, a ton of people jealous on that alone. So that's the quote for you, Cleveland. Um, also, 6 3, 2003, something you remember, Sammy Sosa at the bat for the Chicago Cubs hits a grounder to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, and lo and behold, the, the bat breaks in half. And we find out that Sammy's been using a cork bat <laughs> for many seasons. Now, this was what, five years before? Him and Mark uh, uh, Mark McGuire went on their home run bench. That was '98, right? But Sammy, so no, this is after that, actually. So the, yeah, the the corkback incident is after the uh, home run. Home, home run, yeah. This. Yeah. <laughs> so was Sammy using a cork bat all that time? I wasn't there. <laughs> but that ball was jumping off that bat pretty uh pretty oddly, huh? Sixty six times, sixty times, <laughs> fifty eight times. I, I wasn't there though. Uh, okay, Sammy, Sammy Sosa, the court bat, and then all of a sudden he can't speak English. <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah, in in, like, in a lightness skin that uh, looks like a Pepto Bismol. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, yeah, I don't know what all that's. About. I don't know what all that's about. It's bad. It's all okay, uh, 19, 1932, man, Lee, Lou Gehrig became the first American League batter to hit four home runs in one game. Like, I mean, why why do you pitch at him the fourth time? Why do you pitch at him the f number four? Cam, I saw uh, an amazing statistic the other day. I believe it was that same season that you're referring to. No, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe it was 27. It was one of those seasons. Lou Gehrig hit 366, 48 home runs, 166 RBIs, and finished fifth in MVP voting. So who did he finish behind? Though? I was too astounded. I was too shocked to even. <laughs> to to I him. mean, okay, he was fit, he was behind Babe, and who else? It had to be three other guys, but I mean, those numbers are just like, come on, fifth yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel you. Yeah. That's, um, that's kind of uh, Cleveland, we talked about it earlier. Uh, Celtics makes changes at the top of their at the top of the, their uh, front office. Ainge steps away before they can oust him before he can get fired, and then Brad Stevens becomes the GM. Now they're looking for they're looking to replace their coaching situation. Looking for a head coach. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this? Timing is great. I mean, Danny Ainge is definitely jumping off of a sinking ship. 
Um, the Kyrie Irving experiment didn't work. The Gordon Hayward experiment didn't work. And the Kimba Walker experiment didn't work. Um, he ruined Isaiah Thomas's career. So before things got really, really bad, why not leave? Um, it gives the Celtics a semblance of hope because they have one of the top 10 players in the NBA who can go for 50 in a playoff game. Um, so hopefully Brad Stevens, now that he has become the president and GM, does the right thing and trades uh, Jason Tatum to the Washington Wizards for uh, Hachimura, Bertans, and five first-round picks, as we discussed a few weeks ago. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah, I think Ains is, like you said, getting away out of there, getting out of there early. Um, it's, it's odd that didn't see how – how these guys work, man. Ainge was calling around. So this was this was clearly in the works um, for months already. Because um, information I got, Ainge was calling around to see if he if they were interested in him in a in different uh, different organizations, uh, specifically the Portland Portland Trailblazers. He was interested in seeing if he could take over the Portland Trailblazers if they wanted to work with him. So Ainge was trying to get find his way out. And Brad Stevens, I mean, you came in as a rookie head coach, hadn't coached in the NBA. Now all of a sudden you're going to be a GM. Like, do you GM go president? GM. Do you, president. Go, do you go from how difficult? How difficult is it for you know? Is it the same experience or 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 techniques or standards that you go from? Coaching to general manager, like are, are those the same roles or are are there the same experiences? It, it, it's not the same skill set, Cam. And remember, he came from Butler, so it's not like he came from some program where you saw a bunch of top notch recruits come through and he can kind of differentiate and you know tell the difference between who's good and who's great. I mean, he just got whatever came to him and just tried to make the best out of it. Um, that's not how you do it in the NBA. Um, you have to be an assessor of talent. Um, and you have to be a magician of the salary cap. Let's be perfectly honest. And you have to have a location that's a destination for free agents. So if they don't want to come there um, or hear kind of a bad um, rap on kind of how your organization is, then that's not a place that they want to want to go. But no, there's, there's nothing in his pedigree or resume that says he's going to be good at this job. I think it was just, um, you know, kind of how those things go. I don't want to, you know, say too much but it was kind of weird that he became the president i mean not really having a whole lot of experience in that and what have we seen with his regards to being able to handle personnel to this point i mean not a whole lot i mean he does the best with what he has but no i'm not convinced this is the move that's going to get them to their 18th championship by any means um, so side note, so, so side note, um, with the score right now, 60, 60 to 31 with 30 seconds remaining in the first half, 60 to 39, excuse me, Phoenix is up with 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Caldwell Call, Pope was just ejected for uh, swiping at the hands of at the arm of Tony, uh, Tory Craig as he went in for a lay-in. And um, Caldwell Pope, just as you would, would imagine, came down, eh, was he going for the ball? Eh, the ball was in the other hand, but the guy's going up for a two-hand layup, and he didn't hit him in the head. He just came for a, a karate chop of his arm. Uh, we created a little ruckus, and then he was he got ejected. So now we hear we have. Uh, I don't know why Booker didn't shoot it shoot a three pointer there because he got fouled behind the three point line. But eleven seconds ago, Booker's going to the line. I doubt he's going for the line for three because it was looked like he jumped up to pass it across court to shoot it. But right now, Devin Booker, seven for eight behind the three, three-point line, 11 for 16, 32 points in the first half of this game, 11 seconds to go. 61-39. Yeah, he just got fouled. They just called a, a foul, two shots. 62-39, 10 seconds to go. LeBron got the ball coming up court just to run the end of the half. Let's see what they're going to do. He shoots the logo three, and it's off. And it's off. Um, your boy, 
Matthews gets a rebound and puts it up. So it's 62 to 41 as they head to the locker room in Los Angeles. Hmm. Just a little quick update there. Uh, Cleveland, so let's go, through, let's get through this here, man, as we end the show. Uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, fans, I got a couple of feed, I got a, some feedback from fans, and some people say it's an even trade. Got a couple even trades. I got a couple, no, Luca's a beast. No, I wouldn't do that. Um, would you make the Luca for Luca for Trey Young trade again? Absolutely. You would? I would absolutely do that. Are you are you crazy? What else what has Trey Young showed you that he's comparable to Luca? No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if I'm the Mavericks, absolutely you make that. Trade. Oh, well, yeah. If I mean, you, the, you get, yes, you get, yes. you get Luca. Yeah. But if you're if you're Atlanta drafted him and what did they get a draft they got uh Trey Young and a draft pick. Like Atlanta drafted Luca and traded him to I don't I never understood it to begin with. Why well, Atlanta drafted Luca and then traded him to to the to the Mavericks. And I think they got a second rounder, but it, it just didn't make no sense. Why not draft the guy you want? Um and just draft Trey Young and let Dallas take Luca if you didn't want him. So Atlanta that they initiated the trade. And if you were Dallas, do you do that trade again? Or not Dallas. If you're Atlanta, do you do that trade again? No. I think it's absolutely stupid. As good as Luca is, or excuse me, as good as Trey Young is, he's, he's playing good. Um, it, it took him, what, a season or two to get here. Luca was in the playoffs last year, making noise in the playoffs last year. And we see, we see that I read off the stats, his stats earlier, who – whose uh, company is in as far as scoring in the league. But not only does he score, he rebounds. Last night he had 40, he, 42 points and 14 assists. So that kid's incredible. I think we're in agreement. You do not make that trade again. A little harder question. It was said earlier this week, in fact, as I joined H&B Media on the Happy Hour show, that Dame Lillard is this generation's Allen Iverson? Agree or disagree? Agree. Agree to that. I, I, I agree to that. I would rather have Logo Lillard, man. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you. You would rather have him. Is he better than Allen Iverson, though? You saw him last night, man. Or, a or two a nights, nights ago, ago yeah. man. Yeah, he had 55. Yeah, 50, man. 55 and 10, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Well, so when I you mean, say Allen is going to attack you. He's got the handles, and I mean, he's fearless, but he does not have the skill set that Logo Lillard has, man. Wow. So you, you agree with them guys, huh? Okay. I agree. Okay, I'm about to I'm about to note this. He says yes, okay. Um the second the second point of it is for the contention. Is Serge Ibaka good as or better than Ben Wallace? He's not Ben Wallace. Was Serge Ibaka. He's not today. Was Serge Ibaka good as or better than Ben Wallace? You know, I had this argument uh, when he made the Hall of Fame. Serge Ibaka has not been a four-time defensive player of the year. Leave it at that. They have this. They have the same amount of championships. Serge, Serge might have a four-time defensive Serge, player of the year. Serge I, I battle. A, I battled about this for two days. I think Serge about has whether a bigger, Ben Wallace is a Hall of Famer or not. But I am not he, going to battle with you about whether he's better than Serge Ibaka. Was it? Was he? A, is he a Hall of Famer? I said no. Okay, but he made it clearly. But I'm not gonna. I'm. There's no but, argument as to whether he's better than Serge Ibaka. 
they have that's they not, have the same they have the same amount of championships. And if blocks is all you're going to give me, um, I think Serge averages more blocks per blocks, game. Blocks, rebounds, four time defense player of the year, All NBA. Serge Ibaka's never made the All NBA team. Yeah, I think he made it twice. Uh, ben Wallace. Oh, did. twice did he? The Ben Wallace. Thirteen twice. Okay. Ben, ben Wallace did. No, I thought he made it five times. Sure. Did he? Uh, well, one one of the it. three teams. I. I, I, I battle about this for so long. Okay, okay, all right. So that people were telling you this, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, he made first, second, and third team five times. Okay, I was shocked myself. Okay, Serge Ibaka's never done that. He's not. In, yeah. He's not in Ben Wallace's category. Not in his category, he says. Okay, he's more athletic. Um, he can do more things, but he's not more accomplished. Okay, fair enough. What's the word about Aaron, um, Alex Rodriguez? Has he has he come up there? Has he had a little party? Has has he talked about the Timberwolves coming to? You know how, you know how, sensitive, you know how sensitive A Rod is. You know how he always wants to be liked and loved. Yeah, and now that he's kind of yeah, yeah. gotten back into you know kind of the good graces of a few people, you know he's trying to do a, you know a few humanitarian things. Lots of people have said they want to bring a, a franchise to Seattle, but I mean. Seattle, he can't bring the, a team to Seattle because this is one of the markets that they want for a new franchise because they want to make all of their ownership whole again for all the money that they've lost. So two brand new teams have to come into the league. You cannot move a team. They will not oh. allow it. Oh, so you're saying the NBA won't allow it. So uh, how about this? Uh, he, he owns the team. Alex Rod, he just bought the team, right? So to your point, the NBA would probably want an expansion team because they can – it's a bigger payout to the rest of the owners, right? Yes. But doesn't that dilute the talent if they bring two two new expansion teams in? Yes. Number one, number one that's going to dilute the talent. Number two, yes. you can bring – you can swap Seattle, um, Minnesota to Seattle and the talent remain the same. And why not charge A-Rod that same – if you're going to charge what – uh, two hundred fifty million for you to, for you to move the team. Why not charge a rock four hundred million to move the team? They still get they still get what eighty percent of that payout because the fee the, 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 the fee that they pay out for a an expansion franchise is like a billion dollars. But oh, is it wise? Is it wise in the current climate? To dilute the talent with by adding two new teams that doesn't give you the same that doesn't give you the same um, promotional deal that doesn't give you the pro same promotional uh, it doesn't give your promotions and your 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 partners the same bang for the buck by you diluting the talent. They're going to add Seattle and Kansas City. In the next two years, or Seattle and Vegas, it's or or Seattle and Vegas. See, see now you're see now you're on you're, now you're on board. You see how this is you see how this is working. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I think it's diluting the talent. Like I, I would much rather the expansion team move to Seattle than. Well, that's just you, Cam. That like, you personal team. preferences. That's not what's best for the league. What's best for the league is to have those think, markets. I don't. I don't think it's best for the league if they uh, allow two. No, it's to buy best for the league to have those markets. I mean, what you're talking about, you know, a dilution of talent is. Yeah. Eventually, eventually, it will catch up, and maybe they'll catch lightning in a bottle. Maybe they'll get Kevin Durant with the second pick because Portland decides that they want to pick uh, Greg Oden, <laughs> and that team will just be like, you know, super spectacular. You never know what's going to happen, bro. Just because there's going to be less, you know, more, more roster spots, which means you know less talented players, sure. But no, these markets have to open up, man. Well, we'll see. So what? So what's the talk? Are they going to play in the Iceberg Arena? Is that they're going to play in the Iceberg Arena, formerly known as the Seattle Center Coliseum? I don't know. What the, I don't know what the name of that place is, but yeah, uh, man. So yeah. far, that's what it's looking like. Really, we, yeah. we've already had these conversations numerous occasions. I'm not a big fan. I'm not happy about it, but 
I haven't heard anything to the contrary to this point. Okay, so we'll see. We'll see how this works, I and mean, we're gonna keep our eye on it. And then you, you as our correspondent up there in the Northwest, have to keep the fans informed about what's going, what's going on. Absolutely, as always. Uh, this weekend we got uh, Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul. Who you got? Are you tuning in? I have Mayweather, and no, I'm not tuning in. You're not gonna tune in for the spectacular for this no. for to see Ocho Cinco. Ocho Cinco fight, no interest. Man, you got to get your you got to get your game up. So, um, Kwame Brown, what you think of Kwame Brown's re- recent rants? I mean, now he's going after Jamel Hill. And he's uh, continuing with Stephen A. What do you think of Kwame Brown, man? Is is it time? Has, should he pull somebody pull the mic from him? What do you think should be going on here? Trying to pull the mic from him. I mean, maybe he has a you know a, a touch of the CTE, and uh, maybe he has a touch of uh, <laughs> you know uh, adverse reaction to uh, COVID. I'm not quite sure why all of a sudden he's decided to come out with all of these you know um, rants and raves at people that have had you know contradictory things to say about him. It's not like he hasn't been, uh, you know, a source of that. So, well, he, it, it all started with the the auto smoke interview with Gilbert Arenas and what's your, the Jenny Bus, your your owner. Like it all started with that, and then he he just went bananas. Um, but you've heard enough. You you've heard enough, or you have not yeah, listened. To I, it? I, I've absolutely heard enough, man. Oh wow, he it's kind of a sad some, commentary. Have you? But you've heard it. I told you it's comical, right? I I told you to listen to it a couple of weeks ago. I told you, you it's comical, right? and and it, it it was still it was rather sad. I'm sorry. Oh wow, he said sad. Okay, I thought it was comical. So, well, I know some things I think is sad is, but you you love spouting off about it. Is these Mariners? What's their record now? What is their record like? Under you know, the Mariners, it's funny that you mentioned that um, because you've kind of been the gift and the curse, Cam. Um, up until the last two games, they had won five in a row in the last the last two. So uh, they're five and two in the last uh, seven games since we last spoke. But unfortunately, they've uh, lost one of their starting pitchers. Hopefully, only misses one start. Uh, what, do I have, rookie, what do I have to do with that? The rookie of – you're all about bad karma. I don't know if you know that. But, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're the bad karma uh, poster child. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, ask your ask your Clippers after tomorrow. Anyways, so uh, the other the rookie of the year, Kyle Lewis, got hurt. Let me get this clock um, going, and, so you don't. So, so you don't he's go supposed over, to miss a couple of months, your time, which was not which is not good news. Um, some of the other minor league players have been playing pretty well. We brought uh, Taylor Tramiel back. We do um, got the stopwatch going, fans. Which so we sent you know. down. Can't uh, we only hear that two minutes? Uh, Jared Kelnick. So. You know, there's some been some things kind of going on. You know, Marco Gonzalez came back; their their ace uh, pitched quite well yesterday. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. But uh, you know, they're right in the thick of things, Cam. They're about two and a half, two and a half games out. Two games out of out of what though? Out, out of first what place. First place in the in the American League or in the, the AL West? In the, in the AL, AL West, West. In, their, in their division. In their division. Yeah. Will they get a pennant this season? Probably not this season. No. How many all stars will they have this season? Two. They have will legitimately have two people make the all star team. They will legitimately have two people make the all star team. And they are. Uh, I think Mitch Hanniger will make it, and probably one of their pitchers, probably one of their relievers. One of the relievers. How safe coach treating you? See, he couldn't even he couldn't even make it a minute. You, you know, know safe coach. You know, make, thanks he for asking, he, Cam. He couldn't make it a minute. Oh, with Cam, thanks for asking. I got my second shot. Uh, on Tuesday, so I'm all uh, vaccinated up. I'm about to go down to uh, it's actually T-Mobile Park now. Oh um, yeah, yeah. yeah stay, okay. stay current with the times, but uh, oh, yeah. okay, <laughs> okay. It's been a while since you've been back to the town, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it should be a fun. I'm looking forward to going back there and uh, you know watching some good games and uh, you know enjoying the atmosphere, the environment. Oh, man. I, I I say Cleveland, don't waste your time, man, and stay away. That's what I would tell you. That's 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 what I would tell you off the top of my head. Uh, but Cleveland, I, we appreciate the. I'm sure there's a few Mariner fans, baseball fans, who appreciate your time. Uh, I, um, you know, 
hate that hate hate that you waste your time going there, and that you get yourself beat up expecting something out of uh, out of those Mariner squads that they don't give you, man. You start off the season that they're saying that they're going to be hot, they're going to be in the race as the top teams in the Amer- in the American League, and now you're looking at the top team in the division, and it, it's a lot of sliding going on. That's what I that's what I hear. But but fans, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep Cleveland. Um, He's gonna keep talking about him, so we we gonna keep him giving us the updates on on how that squad is doing. Fans, and for the rest of you guys, we appreciate your participation. Thank you guys for tuning in to another fantastic show, of Voice of the Fans podcast. We're a day late on the show, but uh, you know it's only because we got NBA action going on. They had a game going on last night that we couldn't attend to, and mm-hmm. I knew Cleveland. I knew Cleveland didn't want to. Uh, you know, he'd, he'd be crying already if he was actually watching the game that's going on. So I try to keep you guys abreast of the score. I think it was a 20 point game at halftime, Cleveland. Can you guys, can the Lakers not have come back? Absolutely. <laughs> I like the unwavering confidence right there. Cleveland, thank you for your participation, man. Fans, as always, thank you guys for your participation. Please hit that subscribe button. Give us a like, give us a review, rate rate the show for us. Let us know how, how we're doing. We can't get better if we don't know what you guys want to hear. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us what segments you want. And as always, thank you guys for making our voice your choice. Cleveland, have a good week, man. Let's talk soon. You're the same, bro. Can't wait for the next show. Later.